The number five Florida State Seminoles. Newly number five Florida State Seminoles head to the swamp. This will be Saturday, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Florida State about a touchdown favorite or so at the moment. Florida won three straight meetings from 2018 to 2021 before losing last week last year in Tallahassee. And the Gators are 3-12 and 12 in the series when the Seminoles are in the top five in the AP poll with five straight losses. The last time they beat a top five Seminole team was in 1997. So history is very much against the Florida Gators and recent history is very much against the Florida Gators as well. They've lost four straight games, but three of the four have come against teams that are currently ranked in the top 15. It is a battle of the backup quarterbacks. And uh, we'll start with Graham Mertz being out. At least we'll start there. Um, Cause I don't know how many people are aware that he is not available. Uh, Cause there was, he heard his collarbone. There was hope and, and some optimism that maybe it wasn't a fracture. Maybe he'd be okay. They said it was not displaced, but it's not something that's at the moment's going to require surgery, but he's unavailable for this one either way. So was bummed to see that Graham Mertz, he had a great year, by the way. And if the Florida Gators lose, then his season is obviously over because they won't go to a bowl game, but he'd made great strides this year at Florida and should be proud of, of just how much he's improved from where he was a year ago at Wisconsin. This means that Florida will officially turn to Max Brown. And as of right now, I don't know a ton about him. I've been able to kind of reach out to some folks that are more familiar. Um, he completed four or five for 56 and, and had seven carries for 42 yards against Missouri. So I got to see a limited bit of work but i don't know a ton about the guy i don't know a ton about his skill set he's got some good mobility according to the people i talked to and it seems like that billy napier actually really likes his future but this is not going to be a a great spot to go into especially understanding what's going to be coming against you with the pass rush that florida state is likely going to bring jordan travis on the other side he's the one that everybody knows about and it was one of the more heartbreaking experiences I've had as a as a college football analyst, seeing him go down last week with with what is likely to be a career ender or career ender at Florida State, not a career ender from a permanent standpoint, but a career ender at Florida State. To see his college career end on the field like that was really disappointing. Well, here comes Tate Rodemaker, and so far statistically, here's what I got: he is twenty of thirty five this year with five touchdowns against zero interceptions that 23 of those attempts came last week against North Alabama. So not a ton of experience this season against top tier competition, but he did get quite a bit of burn last year against Louisville. And he actually led led Florida state to a comeback in that game after Jordan Travis was banged up there in the first half. Here's what I've been told about Tate Rodemaker. He has great arm talent, And he's a lot more athletic than you realize, but he's a very smart and cerebral young man that is a coach's kid and also has great intangibles. I mean, he's there at Florida State, has been there for four years and has just wanted to stay in the spot that he's in, learn, develop, and then in time, he's going to get his opportunity. Taking the Carson Beck approach here in the college football world, it's very different from what it is in so many other places. He was not as highly regarded as a prospect as some of the other guys that have sat around and waited, but still he's a guy that they really like. This was the first commitment that Mike Norvell received when he became the head coach at Florida state. So it's a guy that he's acknowledged. He's a guy that he's noticed and the guy that's gotten much better in the system and much more comfortable in the system these last couple of years. Big thing for Tate Rodemaker in this one is he just has to play really smart. Because Florida is not a team that's going to generate a lot of pressure. They have just 19 sacks on the season. And then five of those came against Arkansas. He's, he's not a team that's going to generate a ton of pressure. And they're also not a team that's going to turn you over. Florida's created just seven turnovers this year. That is 130th in college football. So he needs, needs to be smart with the football. Don't take any unnecessary risks. And force Florida to be the aggressor and see if they can actually pull that off with a backup quarterback in place. He's got a great supporting cast. He has excellent receivers on the perimeter. He's got a really good run game. His offensive line is a little bit suspect at times, but I think that they'll protect him. And I think Mike Norvell 
will have a really good plan to make sure that he's super comfortable in this start against the Florida Gators. A matchup that I'll be paying close attention to on the field will be Greedy Vance against Ricky Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall is a guy that wasn't used enough last week. Just five targets. He's the number one wide receiver for the Florida Gators. Just five targets last week, but he's been the go-to guy for quite a while, and he's just 52 yards away from 1,000 yards on the season. He's had a great year, and he's had a great couple years since transferring over from Arizona State. And Greedy Vance is one of the better cover guys in the country. Really good in the slot. He can play all over the place. If I were them, I would move Pearsall into the slot where I'd live primarily, and I would just put Greedy Vance on him if I were Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator for the Florida State Seminoles. So that'll be really interesting. And then the other aspect of it, the cover guys be a good matchup for sure, but Florida's offensive line needs to be great. They are not great as it relates to sacks given up, given up 33 this year. Uh, their left tackle, Austin Barber, has been out the last couple of weeks, so they've had to move some pieces around. Now you're going up against Jared Verse and Patrick Pate. It's not the great get-right recipe that you want if your tackles have been a little dicey the last couple of weeks. A couple trends here. Florida's 5-0 and against the spread as a home underdog since 2018. A couple takeaways from that trend. How is it that Florida has only been a home underdog five times in the last five years? That was shocking, number one. Two, I'm surprised they played that well in that spot. I think this would be a really good game. I think Florida State will win, but I do not think it will be pretty. I think it's going to be a grinded out game for Florida State, and I think Florida will throw their best punch and probably play well, but I don't think it'll be enough to be able to control the line of scrimmage against a Florida State team that I think is still very, very good and probably has a bit of a chip on their shoulder given all the things that have been said about their team the last couple of days.